What's up, everybody? My name is Chris. You're watching B-Boy 45, the hospital's own TV and radio station. And you're in for another special edition of Maya's latest news to keep you in the groove. Because like it says right there on the screen, we have somebody very special calling in right now. Maya, my friend, who do we have on the phone today? Jonathan McLean. Woo! Jonathan McLean! Dude, can you hear us? Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hey, everybody. Excellent. Excellent. So cool. Thank you for taking the time to call into Maya's show and to talk to all the kids here at the hospital for a couple of minutes. Maya. Absolutely. I told Jonathan you were going to start peppering him with questions, so go for it. What do you got? Okay. Um, so I was just wondering first, since Christmas was just on um, Monday, I just wanted to ask if you had a good Christmas I did have a good Christmas. Thank you for asking, Maya. I um, went and visited my dad, who lives um, in North Carolina. And so I was in a cabin with him and um, and my wife, and we were just hanging out, and it was cold and pretty, and it was lovely. How was, you, how was your Christmas? Did you have a good Christmas? Yeah. Yeah, we just stayed home and watched movies. Yeah? You're yeah. In, is it cold there? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty cold right now in Colorado yeah. here. It's uh, yeah. It's been like single-digit temperatures, but just got up to a balmy 40 degrees today. So I think oh, nice. Yeah, Very we're nice. Be doing put, on your, right. put, put on your bathing suit. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Go get a suntan already. <laughs> all right. What yeah. else you got, Maya? Yeah. Um, so I was uh, wondering if you have any special Christmas traditions. Any special Christmas traditions? Yeah, I think we do. We we like to um, we like to always used to when I was a kid, especially we would open our presents on Christmas Eve, which I think they just did for me because I was too impatient to wait <laughs> until mm-hmm. Christmas morning. And then you know, I, have you you've seen the movie A Christmas Story? I'm sure, right? Yeah, Christmas Story, the one with Ralphie. I think the one with Ralphie. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean. It doesn't feel like Christmas unless I watch that. So every right. year I make sure I watch that movie. You'll shoot your and eye out, kid. That one. Yeah, right? that's, the, yeah. that's that's the one. All right. And then also, and then also, you know, the Bruce Willis movie Die Hard is a great Christmas movie. Not just because it's an action-packed Christmas movie, but because the the main character is named John McClane. That's and right. That's, that's my name. So I have to watch that every Christmas too. So those are my traditions. I know when, when, when Maya told us who we were going to be talking to, to today, uh, you know, last week, I was like, oh, no way, the guy from Die Hard. Oh, wait, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> the That's actual me. character. That's me. <laughs> Die Hard yeah. and Christmas Story. Good traditions. Good traditions. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. They're good. They're good ones. Yeah. Um, so what's it like working with Disney, and how did uh, your relationship with them start? Um, that's a great question. Um, I also uh, write. Uh, so I write uh, as well as act. And a few years ago, an old friend of mine named Kali uh, got cast on a TV show called Live and Maddie, which I'm sure you've seen. Yes. And, and she's, she played the mom on that show. And one of the things that they asked her if she wanted to do every year was write an episode herself. And she said, sure. And then she called me and said, but I've never written an episode of TV before. Will you help me? And I said, I would be happy to. And so she and I, each season that Liv and Maddie was on, would write um, for that show. And um, the people who uh, cast Liv and Maddie also cast a show that was on Disney XD for a couple of years called Crash and Bernstein. And um, they asked me if I wanted to be on that show as an actor. And I said, sure. And I did. And I met this guy, Eric. And then Eric went on to be the guy who is the man who's in charge of Bizarre Vark. And so when Bizarre Vark came on, he called me because we had met working on another show of his. And he said, hey, do you have a good British accent? And I said, yeah, I think so. Why? And he said, because I have a character on Bizarre Vark. Um, he's basically a head in like a TV screen. <laughs> and, uh, and, and if you want to come and be like this British head in a TV screen, I think that could be super fun. And I said, that's the weirdest thing that anybody's ever said to me. Yes, 100% I'm in. Of course exactly. I am. Yeah, I love and, it. <laughs> and that's, that's how it all came to, to happen. And then when I got on the show, I met um, uh, Olivia Rodrigo and Madison Who play, uh, who play um, 
uh, uh, Paige and Frankie, and I just thought that they were the coolest, smartest, not even kids, just some of the coolest, smartest people I've ever met in my life. And, uh, and I couldn't believe how lucky I was. And so I basically just tried to do the best job I could. And, and so far, I haven't screwed it up so much, and they keep asking me to come back. So I'm <laughs> fingers crossed. That's a good thing to do is just not screw something up. You're invited yeah, back. Yeah, basically just Keep try and fly it. under the radar, not make anybody mad. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's basically my mantra that's for right. life. That's how I get through the day. Nice, <laughs> nice. Now, uh, I don't know if you know this, but you know those two you just mentioned also have called in to Oh, uh, yes, show. I know. Yes, I know, okay. I know. I figured they're, that maybe they're... that was the connection, but uh, you know that's what makes you all very cool <laughs> and smart, of course. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm, throwing, <laughs> I'm throwing Maya a curveball, or maybe I'm throwing you a curveball or both, but you're talking to Maya, who happens to be a super fan of all things that you just mentioned. Yeah. Now, if you could, if, okay, if Jonathan starts describing a show that he wrote, one of the episodes he wrote for Live and Maddie, do you think you might know which one he's talking about? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. So, like, which, do, if you remember, what, what's one of the sure. episodes that you wrote well, for Live and Maddie? The one that we wrote, I can tell you that I can tell you the one we wrote this last season because it's the freshest in my mind. Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Was uh, we wrote an episode. Um, that was really special, actually. Um, it was about uh, Liv and Maddie are now, in the final season, they were living in California, and Maddie met, uh, knew a guy at the mall who played guitar, and what she found out was that he was actually homeless. Okay. And, and so what they did was they set out to help build a tiny house so that he would have a place to live. And that was what inspired Maddie to realize that this, like, giving back to people and helping people and then doing that kind of thing was what she wanted to do with the rest of her life. And so that episode that we wrote was kind of the one that basically sets Maddie off on her, the next journey that she will go off on to after the show ended. So I was really proud of that. It was really special, and it felt like a really important episode to write. That sounds like an important episode. Mm-hmm. And what was cool was yeah. right when he said, met a guy with a guitar, bing, the light bulbs went off and Maya's face lit up. She's like, I know that one. So, yep, yes. that's the one. See, I, knew, the I one. knew it. I knew once you started talking about an episode, you'd, you'd know what it was. So, pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, awesome. It's so cool to hear how everything is interlinked and, you know, one thing leads to another and then all of a sudden you're a talking British head. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And really, that, that's been my dream my whole life, Maya, uh, is to be a talking British head. So, but although, although, although I think you saw the Christmas episode, right, where now yeah. I'm no longer in the machine. You saw my whole body for the first time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that felt pretty cool. Yeah, and um, you also guest starred on another one of my favorite Disney shows. I mean, it, it was on Disney XD. Uh, Lab Lab Rats yes. Elite Force. Yes, I did. That happened the, the same way. I was actually the the funny story about that is I was filming that episode of that show, and it's on the same um, lot in Los Angeles, the same place where they did live in Maddie. And so while I was working, I would film on that, and then we would get a lunch break. And then it happened to be happening at the same time that one of the episodes I wrote was um, being edited. So when I would get lunch, I would leave Lab Rats, go over to Liv and Maddie, and give them notes on uh, editing the episode. And then when lunch was over, I'd come back and, and shoot Lab Rats. That was, like, that was like the most Disney week of my life. That was a very <laughs> Disney week. That sounds like an awesome week. It was pretty yeah. great. It was yeah. pretty great. It's, I yeah. think you just described Maya's dream week. Yeah, you just did, yeah. Starring, yeah, starring in one, writing another, editing, all of it was good. Yeah, it was very, very cool. Is that, is Maya, are you, are you going to come out to L.A. And, and do some Disney stuff? Oh, my goodness, she'd love that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Good. We'll, yeah. We'll, 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 keep the, we'll keep the light on for you. We're waiting. Sweet. Sweet. All right. Yeah, my my may have just passed out. Just so you know. <laughs> yeah, sorry, just, I didn't mean. I didn't, yes, I didn't mean to make you fall, fall just, over. And just the thought of doing that for an actual living would be amazing. Yeah. All right. What else is on your list? Okay, so other than Brizard Vark, I was wondering, do do you have a favorite Disney Channel show? Do I have a favorite Disney Channel show? I mean, I think Brizard Vark is pretty hilarious, to be honest with you. Like, I, 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 I will watch even the episodes I'm not on. Um, but apart from that, <laughs> um, apart from that, I, you know, um, uh, I. Uh, had become friends too with Landry Bender um, from Best Friends Whenever, 
um, because I met her on that other show I talked about, Crash and Bernstein. She was on that show. And, and so when I worked on that, I met her. And Best Friends Whenever uh, shot next to Bizarre Bark. And so I would occasionally watch that one, too, because, uh, because I wanted to support her. And then I just found myself watching the show just because. At first, you know, you start to do it because you want to support your friends. And then the next thing you know, you, like, really like a thing. Well, that's kind of what happened. I thought Best Friends Whenever was, was pretty cool. Did you watch that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that 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 one I that one I guess I like a lot. And and I also thought Girl Meets World was was pretty cool too. With Sabrina? Yeah, 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 exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's been here a couple times in our studio. She's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Um Yeah, so um like so on Bizarre Vark, you do an amazing um British accent, like when I wa when um I when you were on the um what am I trying to say? Maybe when you uh, saw him on TV, yeah. you thought maybe he was British, yes, right? Yeah, that's what I was yeah, trying yeah, yeah. to say. Um, <laughs> just couldn't come up with any yeah. words. And then you go to do some research, and you're like, wait a minute, this guy's that's not from Britland. That is from Britland. Right. Um, <laughs> that's the most flattering thing you can you can say. Thank you, Maya. That that means a lot. I I, I, uh, I hope that I've been able to fool people. Okay, it's pretty fun. Yeah. It's pretty fun. Well, no, I remember, yeah, yeah, I was convinced you were British. So. Well, when I went and auditioned, I still had to audition just like everybody else. My my friend called me and said, you know, do you want to uh, be considered for this part? But I still had to go in and, and audition like everybody. And it was me. And just a bunch of British guys. And so I thought, oh, well, there's no way this is going to work out. Yeah. And, you know, and the thing that I've learned is that, that that took all the pressure off of me, right? And so what I've learned is when you don't put pressure on yourself, that's when things tend to work out the best. Because I was like, oh, well, this is probably not going to work out for me because I'm not really British, and they are. And then I guess that's why I went in and did a good job, because I wasn't really stressed about it, you know? That's so awesome. That's what I learned from that, yeah. Yeah, take the pressure yeah. off just... Be yourself or a British version of yourself. And then. <laughs> that's you know. right. Yeah. That's right, man. That's that's it. Well, right. now we've built it up so much, we got to hear the accent. And I'm going to tell you, maybe. Well, oh, oh, Maya's got a follow up question. Just tell me yes. to be quiet, Maya. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, are um, there any like other accents that you can do? Um. Well, yes, of course, of, of course, Maya, there are other accents I can do. Uh, I do think that British, however, is one of the ones that it comes easiest to me simply because I, I, I've been to England a few times and I, I've made some British friends and, and that, that, that's been sort of an easy thing for my ear to find. But all right, you know, I mean, sometimes there's other parts of England where people talk a little bit different. I mean, it's still British, right? But it's like a different kind of British. No and then, of course, <laughs> you're right. And then, of course, there's Irish. And then the Irish people, they talk totally different too. And that sounds like a very kind of same thing, but it's also different all at the same time, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I think maybe there's a few I can do. I don't know. <laughs> I love it. That was a, that was a great yeah. way to say yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, well um, uh, Maya, before we leave the accent yeah. thing, I just wanted okay. to say the name of your show in a British accent. Like, you're mm -hmm. watching... The, oh. Okay, so it's a, lo it's a long one. It's latest news to keep you in the no, groove it's, it's with the Maya. Latest, yeah, yes. the latest news <laughs> to keep you in the groove with Maya. So maybe you could say, you're watching the latest news to keep you in the groove with Maya in your accent, and then we'll work it into her intro package. Of course I can. <laughs> uh, you're watching the latest news to keep you in the groove with Maya. Wonderful! Nicely done. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. That is that's what I, that's that was the moment that I secured my Kids Choice Award. I can feel there, it. I know that's there. It is right there. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I know uh, you had a one man show that was um, critically acclaimed, and uh, do you miss doing theater? Uh, that is a wonderful question. Yes, I do. I do. I love doing theater. It's all I did for most, for a lot of my life. I mean, I, I did it as a kid, and then I did it in New York for years and years and years, and then I came out and, and started doing TV. But even out here in Los Angeles, um, there's so much uh, theater because there's so many actors. And so there's always a chance to do a play. So I still try and do a play about once a year. Um, wherever I can. Uh, it does big play, little play, you know, uh, they don't all have to be Broadway plays. Just if I can get in front of an audience, it's my favorite, 
favorite thing to do in the world because, you know, when you do a TV or a movie or something, you do your work and then somebody takes it and, you know, they edit it and they do whatever and they do their thing and then you get to see it later. But when you do a play, no one else can touch the work. It's all just you and the audience and, you know, it's like this, it's like this interview. It's like this is just you and me talking and it's just a real thing where you really get a reaction from another person and it's, it's really cool. It's really cool. Yeah, it's my favorite thing to do in the world for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so you've uh, been on stage and on film and on TV. Uh, do you prefer one over the other? Um, I mean, yeah. You know, if I, if I could just do plays, I would probably just do plays. I really love it. I really love it. But then again, you know, um, the thing about a play is the only people who get to see it are the people who can come and see the play. So the best thing about being on TV is that all you have to do is turn on the TV wherever you are in the world and you can see the, the work. And so that part's really special because, you know, that's how you and I are talking today. That's how we got a chance to meet. And I think that's really amazing. So I think it's really cool that you can reach as many people as you can doing movies and TV and stuff. So each one has its own special place. Each one has its own good reason for me to do it. And, and, uh, and, and you know, if I'm being very honest with you, Maya, which I will be, um, theater doesn't really pay a lot of, a lot of money. <laughs> and you can actually, you know, pay your bills and stuff if you work in television. So there's also that part of it. There, there is, is that important factor, for sure. You know, that, that, that's like the grown-up stuff, right? So, yeah. you know, making money to eat and right. stuff like that is important. Right. But it's, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool that you could still do your play, you know, do a play once a year or so, you know, something that you're, you're drawn to and love. But still, the real gig is also acting. It's not like you're. It's not like you're doing something that's not acting at all, and then acting in a play once a year. You know. That's absolutely right. No, what you said is 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 exactly right. Um, all acting is. Um, you can learn something from every acting experience, and every acting experience is a chance to grow and do something new. And so, yeah, a hundred percent. I, I, you know, I'm a very, very lucky guy. I'm so grateful that I get to do that. I get to do this. Very cool. Yeah. What you got, Maya? Yeah. Um. Is there an actor or actress that inspired you to start acting? Um, yeah, there is. Uh, and it, it, it always surprises people uh, when I tell them this. But um, the actor Morgan Freeman, who um, is probably in his 80s now, and I think people may know him from, oh, I don't know, um, like uh, Bruce Almighty, the Jim Carrey movie. He played God in that movie. I think he's played God like three times and <laughs> played the president like five times. <laughs> just a really strong, powerful actor with his incredible voice. But for me, just like you are with Disney, when I was a kid, the two shows that I would watch were Sesame Street and the Electric Company, a show called The Electric Company. And when I was a kid, this guy Morgan Freeman was still young, and he was on that kid's show, The Electric Company. Yeah. And I thought he was the coolest guy I'd ever seen. And then he went off and became this big movie star. And I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> that's the coolest thing ever. And I just think, like, he's just... And, and also, he did theater for a long time in New York. He did plays. And, and um, I'm originally from the South, and he's originally from the South. And, you know, he's like 40-something years older than me and a very different kind of a guy, but he really inspired me. I just, um, he was a guy, you know why, too? He was a guy who worked for a really long time, and then finally, I think, when he was 50 years old, he got his big break in movies. And that's incredible, right? Because that just shows you that if you love something and you work hard at it and you stick with it, that eventually... It'll, it'll pay off. And the only way that you can lose is if you just sit down and give up. And so he was inspiring to me both because he was a good actor and because I got to see him on TV, but also because he worked so hard and never quit. And that really inspires me too. And so that, that's, that's somebody that I really looked up to for a long time. And it's interesting now that I'm, now that I'm older, now that I'm the grown up, <laughs> I look at, I look at uh, actors like Olivia and Madison. Um, who are so serious and they're so focused and they're so um, committed and they're just good people. And I really, I mean, I genuinely like them both so much. And, uh, 
and now I'm I'm just as inspired by people younger than I am as I was when I was a kid by people older than me. And that's the cool thing about being an actor, too, is you get to work with so many different people in so many different stages of life, and you get to, get to learn from everybody. It's it's really cool. Man, what a what a great explanation of inspiration. That is so cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's like I said, I'm 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 a lucky lucky guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have any new projects coming up? Um, I do. Um, I uh, I have a few things uh, going on. I am um, I actually on as a writer. I actually sold um, a TV show idea. So in the new year, I, I will start working on trying to make that. I can't say much more about it yet because it's still early. But oh, I, come on. Give us a scoop. I, can't, I <laughs> wish I could. Kidding. I wish I could. Um, hey, but congratulations. But, That's awesome. Thank you. It's very cool. And also, um, if, um, if anybody watches Grey's Anatomy, I will be on an episode of Grey's Anatomy, I think, in a couple of weeks. I'm not, I shot it a couple months ago, so I think that'll be on pretty soon. Um, and then there's a new show on HBO that I'm on, and that'll be coming on soon. So that, and then hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, uh, Bizarre Dark, I mean, not fingers crossed for third season, Bizarre Dark is coming back for a third season. Like, that. that's for sure. And, you um, just made my life, I think. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad I could bring that to you today um, as a belated Christmas gift. And, um and hopefully, you know, I will do as I like. I, I people always say, "When will you be on Bizarre Bark next?" And I've always said, "I will be there as much as I can sneak my way onto the show. As much as they'll have me, I will be there." So hopefully, I'll do a bunch more of those too. Now, have you written for Bizarre Varks yet? No, Bizarre no, um, I, I haven't because uh, because I don't want to get greedy. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want to start asking them for everything, but occasionally I will like just try and sneak ideas in, right? And uh, and those those sometimes wind up finding their way into the shows and that's that's pretty cool so i feel like i feel like my voice is pretty well represented i, I nice. but i do like i said i don't want to get that i don't want to start asking for more than i can chew you know I, I ask because you know you start writing and then all of a sudden you're in every episode and they're like wow this guy's in it all the time now this is crazy <laughs> that's right yeah that's right i think that liam should have an episode all of his own right. and yeah <laughs> i think maya might agree with you on that one yeah, <laughs> no that sure. would be awesome yeah. uh, please please let anybody know who'll listen yeah <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, I was gonna say as long as Paige and Frankie are still in it. Yes. Oh, are you? I, <laughs> yeah. I would. I would not. I would not show up if Paige and Frankie were not still in that show. Those Thanks are you. they're they're great characters, and you know they probably talked about this. I mean, Maddie and and Olivia are like besties in real life too. It's not it's not an act. Like they are just absolute best friends all the time on the show, off the show. Um, it's really cool, and I think it it shows because you can't fake that stuff. You know, when you see how great they are together on the show, that's because they're great that way in real life, too. It's a, it's a cool thing to watch. That is very cool. Now, I know yeah. we've got you on the phone for a little bit here. Do you have a couple more minutes? Because I know Mai's got a couple more questions. Absolutely, as long as you need. What, 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 awesome. what else? What's awesome. Up? All right. Um, so what um, got you interested in poetry and slam poetry? <laughs> <laughs> um. That's such a cool question. I, um, I, when I was much younger, when I was like a teenager, because I'm old now, Maya, I'm super old. Um, <laughs> well, when I was much younger, uh, I used to listen to lots and lots of rap music. Like, I, back, back, like way back before it was as popular as it is now, back when it was just starting. And I loved it. And I used to sort of just rap, sing rap songs to myself all the time and just like sing hip hop stuff to myself. And, um, I didn't think I was ever going to make it as a rapper. I didn't think that was my career path, um, but I still love to do it. And so poetry was a way that I could sort of write, you know, lyrics or, or rhymes and things like that. And then slam poetry for everybody who doesn't know is it's basically you get up and you do a poem in front of an audience and then other people do poems and then the audience votes and it's like a competition. And then, you know, after three or four rounds, you have the winner and, and whoever else. And um, I'm, I'm proud to say I've never lost a competition. Ooh, and, nice. And so I was like, oh, well, I may not be a rapper, but I'm pretty good at this, so I'll do this. I guess that's really the answer to your question is 
I try not to do things I'm bad at and try to just do lots of things that, you know, do things I'm good at as much as I can. And so if I find something that I'm good at, I'm like, okay, I'll do this for a while. And yeah. it turned out I was okay at poetry, so I just kept doing it. So that's kind of how it happened. And it's also like the, the, the acting thing, right? The live theater, the stage thing. You get on a stage and you're in front of a live audience, and so that's just another way to do that kind of live thing with a, with a real group of people watching you in real time. So that's why I started. That's so cool. Now, have you gone up against Watsky? Um, no, 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 no. And, and there, there are lots of like, I mean, amazing, amazing people out there doing poetry that, uh, that I, I certainly would, would not try and, and compete again. <laughs> and compete again. <laughs> hey, but keep that track record going that, uh, you have. Exactly. Lost. Well, that's, that's awesome. the thing, right? Like you just try and find people that you know you can beat. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> that's a way to win. That's a way to win. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, so, uh, as I was um, reading about you, I saw that uh, you do poetry in your spare time. And when I read that, I was thinking, how does he have any spare, spare time? time. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, a, that's a really, really astute, smart, uh, right on point. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I do it less, to be honest, because of exactly what you said. I do it less than I used to. I just... I, I, I don't have as <laughs> as much time as I used to have, um, but I, uh, I, I in my experience, you find the time or you make the time to do the things that you love, right? So um, if it's late and I'm tired, but I feel like it would make me feel good before I go to bed to write two lines of a poem, then I'll just do that, just because it makes me feel good, even if nothing ever comes of it. Uh, so that, that's, that's the thing. You know, spare time is one of those things that you, sometimes you have to figure out how to make it for yourself, and if it's really important, you'll find the time to do it. Man, this, I don't know about you, Maya, but this interview has like been so packed with good <laughs> advice. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Dude, well, seriously, that's, thanks, that's great stuff, because, uh, you know, I don't know how much you know about the format here, you know, but this is a studio that broadcasts to any kids that are watching upstairs in the hospital here. And, yeah. uh, you know, all of that is so applicable, just, you know, making the time to do the things you love, even if they don't, you know, bring immediate riches or fame or anything like that. Just it's something you need to do to to, uh, to feel better, to make a difference, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, great, great I advice. Mean, that's, that's th- thanks, man. I think that that's um, I think that's the most important stuff about life. You know, all this other stuff is cool. The stuff that um, that you can get is cool, but the stuff that you can give is even better. Man, we're going to make a, some sort of a documentary about this interview. My, no. and just awesome. say, just, kids, just live the way that Jonathan McLean says you should, and you'll awesome. be fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. exactly. I mean, but again, just live the way I say in this conversation, not, not the dumb things I do every day. You, know, well, you can ignore those things. You, you learn from your mistakes, right? You do um, learn from your mistakes, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, so you wrote, produced, and acted in some things for funnyordie.com. Yeah. Um, are you still uh, working with them? Um, no, uh, you know, not right now. Uh, this goes to your other question about spare time. I just don't <laughs> have enough time right now, but, but those were really fun and I have a great group of friends that I did them with. And the Funny or Die people um, are really cool and really smart and really generous. And so, um, you know, it's tough when you've got to get a bunch of people together all at the same time with all their crazy schedules and stuff to make that stuff. But, um, but again, as soon as, we, as soon as we have another good idea, I'm sure that what will happen is somebody will make a phone call and the next thing you know, We'll all get excited, and then we'll all get together, and we'll we'll figure out how to how to how to find the time to make some more some more funny stuff. The the other thing about Funny or Die that's interesting too is that um, it, it's really scary, right? Because it is called Funny or Die, so people get to vote <laughs> on whether they think it's funny or whether they think it should just go away. And so, like, you, you don't want to just throw anything out there, you know what I mean? You want to make sure you're giving your best stuff because people are going to let you know if they don't think it's pretty if they don't think it's pretty funny. So um, I, I've actually talked a couple times to um, to Ethan Wacker, who plays Bernie, uh, because that guy is super funny and uh, on Bizarre Vark, and and there's just so much energy and so many good ideas, and he's 
so young, but he's so smart. And so I, I would love to do something with him or maybe do something with all the Bizarre Vark cast and crew. That could be really funny. So um, now that you've mentioned it, you sort of inspired me. Maybe maybe I'll make a phone call and see if we can all do something for Funny or Die. Because who's gonna who's gonna who's gonna say who's gonna say that the guys from Bizarre Vark aren't funny? Yeah. Dummies. Right. That's who. Yeah. That's Dummies. <laughs> Dummies. The uh, yeah. sounds like a plan. You know. Hopefully, <laughs> Maya inspired something. Make that phone call, man. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Maya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So my last question is. Yeah. Who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? Um, that is a wonderful question. Um, thousands of people, uh, and I'm not just trying to like. There, yeah, I could point at you know like athletes or singers or whoever, but honestly, the real life superheroes are the people that I meet who, like people who are sick, for example, people at a hospital, people who um, are struggling against an illness, or people who have, you know, something that's set them back a little bit, and they still get up in the morning, and they still fight, and they still show up, and they still try and do their best, and they still work hard, and they keep moving forward, even if it's hard, or even if it's difficult, and they don't quit, and they don't give up. Those are the people who are the superheroes to me. Those are the real life superheroes. I mean, you know, people who have struggles that they fight against, firemen, people like that, people who put themselves uh, on the line for other people, doctors are superheroes to me. Basically, anybody can be a superhero. All you have to do to be a superhero is not, not give up, even if it's hard, even if you're afraid, even if you're tired, and you just keep going and you just keep working because you can make a difference in the world, those are the people that I look up to. Those are the people that I admire, and those are the people who inspire me. That's good stuff, man. Yeah. It's true. I mean, it's all, it's a, it has the added benefit of being true. It's easy to talk about stuff that's true. When you have to make stuff up, that's when you sound silly. <laughs> but, you know, if you really believe something, it's, it's easy to talk about. <laughs> well, it's clear yeah. to tell that you believe that, and we really appreciate your time, man. Yeah, yeah it's my pleasure. Maya, I'm so thankful that you reached out to me i was so flattered and i really appreciate it thank you so much well thank you for calling in i um i've been so excited to interview you when you first sent me um uh the direct message i actually think i stopped breathing (laughs) um so i I, I have something to tell you and i because and i i hesitate saying it because i don't I hate disappointing people, but I saw one of your tweets and I am, I I can't make any promises. So if this doesn't work out, I apologize, but I'm doing my best. I have a couple of emails out to people who know James Roday and, uh, Dulé Hill. And I'm seeing if I can find somebody who can put me in touch with them so that I can ask them to call in, uh, to you too. So that's I'm working on it. I'm doing my, I'm doing my best to get the guys from Psych on your show. I'm doing my best. We we might have a crying girl right now <laughs> on the microphone who's with her hands over her mouth, not able to breathe. Uh, we hear you loud and clear. You can't make promises. We understand that big time. You know we know how things work. And uh, but on behalf of Maya, Maya, unless you want to say, I don't think she can talk. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you for even for even you know putting finger to keyboard and and doing that. That's that means a lot. So absolutely, I, I'm working on it, and I will I will I will direct message you, Maya, and let you know uh, what I find out. If, if I find out anything, I will keep you updated. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, you're most welcome. All right. My pleasure. Okay. Thanks for your time, Thank man. You. Well, hopefully, uh, we'll talk to you again sometime. All right. I look forward to it. Thank all you right. so much, guys. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.